of cutting of the wood here. So now we're ready to go and take a look at our cutting tools. There are various cutting tools that can be used to turn these pens. They come in different sizes, and different styles, and the, a lot of this is a matter of personal preference. This one is a gouge. It, it looks like a half a U. There's a skew that, can, that some people prefer for finish fine cutting, and other people prefer a round nose tool. Uh, you'll have to kind of use, experiment, see what you like best. But for the pen making, I've found that the gouge will do putting everything you need to do. So when you, before you start cutting, get this tool rest adjusted, the height of it, so that, so that when the tool is level on the tool rest, you're just about center on the, on the mandrel. And again, a quarter inch away, turn it by hand to make sure you're clearing the tool rest. I put one finger, index finger in this groove on the tool rest, and I put my thumb over the top, and I slide my whole body back and forth when I'm cutting. I don't just move my hand back and forth. And I prefer to start in, toward the middle and work toward the ends and come back and work toward that end work toward each end instead of starting on the end there's less chance of the of the tool digging in and at the first you need to do small cuts don't cram this thing in there and try to take big cuts because you're working you're, you're going to be hitting these square corners and you need to get those knocked down around and then you can take a little deeper cuts if you want to so let's turn it on and i'll show you what we're doing to get a beginning cut Again, coming back, going this way. Before you, before you begin cutting, I should have mentioned, I want you to inspect these tools and see that there's no gouges, no nicks, no uh, bad spots on them, that they are in fact sharp tools. And more people get hurt with dull tools than they do with sharp tools. So if a tool looks like it's been damaged or is not sharp, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll sharpen it if need be. As you cut away on this wood blank, your tool rest is gonna be further and further away from the, from the, from the wood. So you may need to, after you get each piece down to about the same amount, you may need to then stop and loosen your tool rest and slide it in, keep it within an eighth of an inch if you can. While you're turning this pen, when you get, you begin to get down close to being pretty thin, you need to be just leave enough wood so you're just a little bigger than the mandrels, than these bu these spacing these bushings we put on the mandrel. Just leave the wood a little bit bigger than those. So you got to be careful. Take real small cuts when you get down that close, because there's not much thickness there, and this wood's starting to get weak. But on, especially on the ends where this pen goes together, you want to try to be the same on each each end, and just a little bit bigger than the then the bushing again. The stuff in between then you can do pretty much what you want to. Maybe I'll put a little a little place here for your finger rest on this one. The rest we can leave pretty much the size it is. And we'll be ready now to uh, begin sanding. Once you have the shape that you think you like, and every pen will be different. You, you have a lot of leeway on, on designs on these. Before you sand, you need to remove this tool rest. Slide it back out of the way, take this off, and put it aside, but be sure to put it back on there when you're done. So the next person will have it to use. Now that your tool rest is out of the way, I'll be giving you some sandpaper that's in three or four various grades of, of coarseness. Start with the coarsest one I give you and progressively work down to the finest one. 
until your sanding is, is uh, done and, and the project looks smooth and, and feels nice. So sanding is done. Coarsest one, use the, the strip on the bottom edge with the tool rest out of the way. And you just keep working through these grits until you get all the, the tool marks from the, the cutting tools out. So you'll just keep working this down until you get it where you want it. Now that we've finished carving this down to the shape we want and we've sanded it, we're ready to, to begin to apply our finish. When checking the sanding job, never check this feel for smoothness while it's running. Shut the lathe off, wait for it to stop, and then you can, then you can inspect to see if there's any scratches left or if it meets your so your, your satisfaction and you're happy with it. To, to put a finish on this pin, there's two types of finishes that are used primarily. There are three or four. There's a paste, there's a liquid, there's a solid wax, uh, lacquer type finish. It's a matter of personal choice. Uh, I most of the time use the liquid finish. It's a heat, uh, sets the, uh, hardens the, the, the finish. So before you use this liquid finish though, I want you to take a paper towel, cover up the bed of the lathe and the, and the uh, motor in case any of this liquid drips down onto the, onto the motor, it won't be, make a mess. So this, two coats of this is I found to be best. You need a couple inch square piece of uh, soft cloth, clean cloth, put the the finish with a little squeeze bottle is easy to apply. Put your, your friction polish on until it's covered. Stand back to the side before you turn it on. There'll be some excess flipping off. That's another for the paper towel. Then with a couple thicknesses of this cloth on the bottom edge, hold it on and move back and forth until you feel the heat coming through on your finger because it's the heat that hardens up this, it's the, the hardens this finish. And so put some pressure on that. And just keep it on there till you get this thing set up from the heat. You'll feel it starting to burn on your finger when it's hot enough. And it doesn't take long. You can see the gloss starting to appear now. The microphone was a little uh, out of position when I began to talk, so quick review. Before you use the liquid polish, put paper towel down covering the bed and the motor. Apply the finish liberally. Stand aside when you turn it on. Hold the clean rag on the bottom edge until you feel heat generating and there's a good gloss shows up. And do that till you about two coats and then you're done. Ready to assemble. Remove your pen from the lathe. Loosen the locking lever on the back of the tailstock. Slide it away from the mandrel. There's a bar that you'll need. Goes in the end of the t headstock. Tap it. Hang on to the mandrel so it doesn't go flying. Hang on to this and tap this and this will come out. Then you're ready to disassemble the, the parts of your pen from the mandrel so that you can assemble the, the workings of the pen. Unscrew the locking nut. Careful not to lose these bushings. Slide off your wood pieces. Put the bushings back on the mandrel so they don't fall on the floor and roll away. And the first thing you need to do is press these pieces together is the, you need to get the, we've got the parts out of your package. You need the little pointy end and it goes on the end that you're going to be riding with. Goes in, this one I'm going to put in this way, and they're pressed in. There's several types of presses on the market There's that are made for pens. There's one that works like this. You put the pen in here and press that in. There's uh, several variations of this type, and there's a quick grip uh, bar clamp like this one that I use, uh, just a personal preference. 
Uh, so you adjust this, get this started in here, and squeeze this on. Now when you do this, you've got to be careful that you're pushing this straight in. Don't go sideways with it. And press that point in to where you want it till it bottoms out. The next piece is the twist mechanism. <clears throat> it's, it's got an indentation, identification an indent mark on it. That goes, the brass end goes into the other end. And that mark is about how far you need to push this into the pin. If in making this, you've made your wood blank a little short or left it a little long, that may need to be adjusted on how far this goes in. So don't push it all the way in it to begin with. You want, I'll show you in a second. You want to test that to see that your, your ink refill is about the right depth. So I'm stopping just a little before, a little before that in identification indent mark, put the refill in, twist it all the way in and see. And in this case, it looks like oh, it's got to go a little bit more. I want that point out a little further than it is. So I'm going to squeeze that down a little bit tighter. Now, you want to be careful at this point and not go too far. Test it again. That point sticks out about the right amount. The next part that goes on is a little ring. The little ring goes over next, over the twist mechanism. Just slide it down. Then you're ready, set that aside and you're ready to put the clip on. This clip is, is optional. If you want to put it in your pocket or not, you can put the clip on, or you can just put the end cap on without it. That can be pressed on, or it can be hammered on. I prefer to just tap it on, but you've got to be careful. Don't hit it too hard. Get a soft face mallet and just tap this down into place until it's snug. You've got something like that. Line up the grain so they, they kind of match and push this cap onto, onto your pen, and there you have a finished product. Twist to extend, twist to retract. And there you have a completed project. Now, before you take this project home to show your mom what you made, all the tools return to the tool rack, your cutting tools, the pen mandrel goes back to the instructor and make sure you put your tool rest back on the lathe. Get a brush, clean up your scraps and mess, pick, put everything in its proper re garbage receptacle before you hand in your project for grading. To emphasize that following the instructions is very important. This is not a difficult project if the instructions are followed, but if you get out of sequence, you could work yourself into a corner and it'd be difficult to, to correct the problem. So stay in, in, in uh, sequence of the, of the instructions. And I'd like to let you know that these pens are available in various styles. Costs vary on the pens. This is one of the cheaper pens. It's a, modeled after a cross pen, which is a very expensive pen on the market. They're, they write well. It's for, 24 karat gold plated, they're a nice gift. And you can spend as much money as you want on some of these pens. Uh, you can get more complicated ones, you can put uh, really exotic woods into them, but we've chosen this one as a basic beginner pen and it's a, it's a nice, nice looking pen when it's finished. So, hope you're happy with your project.